Welcome to South Farnham. This is lovely to see you. Could you come on in? I've got to do the electronic door, I'm afraid. This is a, a sign of the times, isn't it? Let's hope it opens. I'm Andrew Carter, head teacher at South Farnham School in Farnham, Surrey. The governors have decided they'd like to explore it. They've applied. It's been across the Secretary of State's desk, so we are now approved to be an academy and can go forward. So the next stage is for the governing body to explore all the functions that they have to perform, um, what to do with the building, staff insurance, and all those various things. If all that package comes together and is approved by the governors, then we'll become an academy sometime in the next year. What we're, we're not rushing into it, but neither are we growing along like a snail. We want to do it, but we want to just make sure everything's OK. The first question is why would anybody want to do this? You know, that is a lot of work, a lot of effort, for what purpose? And then the real key to this claim is when you actually say, no, this isn't about things. It's about opportunities. Trouble is, when you say what are they, I've got no idea, but I could just do them. Every year for the last 23 years there's been a building programme in the school, and our current one is the building of a lovely new astroturfed area at the back of the school. I've been here 23 years. <laughs> 23 years, that's quite a long time, isn't it? We've always tried to understand that you must keep developing and keep growing. Hence the academy bit is part of a cultural thing. It's, it's another stage of development. We believe in this particular school that the gross gain will be around £140,000. Now, what you have to do then is buy back the facilities that you're using from the authority with that. Now, looking at that is a bit hard to do and you have to make some judgments, we have some figures, but our best estimate at the moment is we may have £40,000 net at the end. Now, £40,000 is a lot of money, and I'm not decrying that, but in running a school terms, it wouldn't be enough to make a great change. The school costs about £6,000 a day, 365 days a year. Yeah, good. We have a mantra which runs through everything we do, well, I won't tell you what the mantra is, because it'll look as though I've just fixed it. Neris? The continual pursuit of excellence. There's teachers entering schools now who are 21, and if we believe that a 21-year-old is going to work in an institution in the same way until they're 65, another 45 years, it's not going to happen. At some point, it's going to change. I believe this is the moment. We always would consult with parents anything of this sort of major nature, invite the parents in, talk to them, and they'll come up with a view. Some have views, think it's an awful idea, and they'll have an argument amongst themselves or a debate. And the same with staff. The caretaker, Mr Brown, we've been introduced to the world. And Alex, who is, uh, works in here, does lots of sort of work dealing with parents at this time of the day. Tell them right through the beginning, that's all the staff, caretaker, teachers, classroom assistants, cooks, you know, everybody talk to them, say, what do you think? What do you think? What are the opportunities here? And through in here, there's the bursa, Mrs Booth, so she's terribly important, and she, of course, is the one who deals with all the finances, and so she is pretty critical. If you're talking about academies, she's going to be very critical. One of the powerful arguments that we've found when talking to people is to point out that probably the status quo is not one of the options. I believe money is the collective noun for teachers, books, support, help for the less privileged children. Then I'll say, do I keep my eye on it? That's fine, come on down. Do I keep my eye? Yeah, absolutely. You want to know how much you've got, and you want to know how it's working and how it goes. So, yeah, it's terribly important. We are now in the process of putting together the packages to put together what it'll actually look like financially. We then go to the governing body later this term, who will look at that, they will then have a meeting which they will agree that the package looks reasonable, doable, affordable, etc. But interestingly, the academy schools that have gone out and those that are thinking about it are in constant touch with another saying, you know, we've, we've spoken to this company and that sounds really good, what have you found out? Well, that'll be good because we'll get to a new position and then we'll sign the document and you, you name a day. The key difference is we'll become independent, funded directly from the Department of Edu for Education. If you have young children, you look after them. And as they grow up, they become more and more independent. I think we'd mostly be pretty disappointed if our children, at the age of 35, we were still paying their gas bill for them. What the local authority, I think, has got to understand, some schools just grew up. Unless your results are low, no one believes you've got a problem. 
actually, we have the same problems as every school. What we've attempted to do is solve them. Now, if we're not careful, we'll have a system where solved problems become not rewarded. So this isn't a rich school. In fact, because we don't have huge social deprivation factors which trigger the funding, we probably get less than most, but we have to be sharper with it, and we have to work hard. The school is beginning to empty now, but they aren't really empty because they're going off to their clubs now. There are 38 clubs running a week. Over 350 children will go to clubs at some time. Without that support from the local authority, you have to seek it elsewhere. I actually think this state of change is actually really quite good because it's sharpening us all up again. Being independent is not an act of aggression, it's an act of maturity. And the greatest gift that a parent gives a child is their independence. And perhaps the greatest gift that a mature authority gives to a school is its independence. The independence with it brings it with it, the opportunity to do things differently. What I would like to be able to do is have a, a school that reflected the community itself. I would like to see schools running 48 weeks a year, but in a different way, and certainly summer camps, certainly gifted and talented musical things, child minding, and you could say you can do all of these things now. You can, but it's more difficult to do it, and you can just respond very quickly. What you can do is start something here, if it doesn't work, stop it and move into something else. And again, there's a teacher in there talking to their classroom assistants at the end of the day. I would like to say that good teachers should be paid more money, and I'd like to be able to take a young teacher who is perhaps six months into the profession, who is showing flair and imagination, and say, I can give you just a little bit of extra cash as a, as a sort of an encouragement, which is difficult to do now. I'd like to be able to say that to children, you might want to stay here a little bit longer. Why not stay at a school till you're 12? And some girls and boys on their way home, which is always very nice to see. These are things that can be done. All that can be done now, but I think these can be responded to very quickly. So I think the opportunities are enormous, but you've got to work at it. And it's going to be hard work, but hard work is great if you've got to do something differently. The key challenge, of course, is making sure at the end of it the children get a better deal. Better schools, more adaptable, adapting to local needs. I think the bigger issue with going to be an academy, it's in your mind. And the issue over the buildings and buying the things can be the outward sign, the excuse for not going. And here we're back at my school office, where um, I spend some of my time sleeping. Things are going to be different. That's the fear and ultimately the excitement. When you leave home, is it better? No. You have to do your own ironing, you have to do your own cooking, you have to pay your own rent. Is it better? Oh my God, is it better? It's better because now you're independent. And independence brings huge opportunities. I said the Eureka moment for us is just that. There will be something good out there, and at the very worst, it'll be the same. Now, we believe, and I think it's a mindset, is the opportunity is the thing to grasp.